So here's a lovely little demonstration of this. Uh, and this is, if you're looking to revise electricity, I'll use a general term yourself, or particularly concepts like current potential difference, you need to look at this website. It's the best one that's pretty much out there. Uh, and there are a lot of stuff out there. And I say this is the very best bar none. It means it's the very best bar. And it's a super educational tool. Partly because when we will do demonstrations with wires, it gets very complicated. You have bucket loads of wires going everywhere. You don't know what's going where. Where this is representing all of that scenario, which you don't have the finicky wires to worry about. So this is representing a wire. It's a copper wire. And what's nice about it is you can see the electrons in the wire. So the brown bit in the background of the atoms, and there's the wire. I want to bring out a second wire, because I want to make it a little circuit. I want to attach one end of it there. I want to straighten it up by putting the other end down here. Now, if I want the basic circuit, what else do I need for current to flow, do we say? Potential difference. So out we do, we grab a battery. There's my battery, nice and simple. <laughs> right, I grab one more wire. Grab the wire. There we go, grab the wire, please you. Now, if I connect it up, what's going to happen? The electron should flow. So it's the battery is supplying a push. Remember we said it's like it's pushing them. I'll actually show you up here. This guy here, it's like it's pushing the electrons in one direction, and this end of it is pulling them back in in that direction down there. Okay. So I use the phrase or the analogy as if the, the, the battery is pushing the electrons around, but it's actually pushing them on one end and pulling them back in on the other end. So that's what the potential difference does. Now, if I push electrons around the circuit and there is no resistance in the circuit, what will happen to the electrons? They will go quickly. They will go very, very quickly. So quickly, in fact, that what might happen? The battery will explode. The battery may well explode. Or these guys here, if that's in a little uh, electrical cable. I'm going to show you one of these guys. The question is often asked, does it matter when you're putting in circuits whether you use black or red cable? Does it matter? No. Because it's all just an electrical wire. It's just covered with different colored plastic, just to indicate what's going on. Um, and what you might happen, if you put this circuit together like that, is you'd actually notice the plastic itself starting to melt. Uh, because we did, we did oh, with a battery last year. We did with a car battery? Car battery. Yeah. So if you attach two ends of this to a car battery, the plastic would certainly melt because it produces a large amount of current. If, so back up to here, if I connect these two guys together, nice and quickly, we should get a large amount of current. In fact, let's... <laughs> and straight away the battery goes boom. So can I separate it? Remove. And we're back in business again. So what should I put in here? Resistor. Yeah. Resistor. Resistor. Stick in right there. Now, you're looking at a wire. You can't see. In this case, you can see the electrons moving. Generally, you can't see if the electrons are moving or not. So what would you like to show to demonstrate the current is flowing? A light bulb. A light bulb would be a good idea. Let's get a light bulb. Would you come? It's pretty impressive, isn't it? And it's all cheap. And there we go. So now you can just about see it lighting. If I want... If I want more electrons to flow, what can I do? Take away the resistor. Change resistance, remove the resistance. Put that back in there. And it's moving a little bit more What else can I do, Alex? Put in two batteries. Put in two batteries. Let's remove this guy, stick in another battery. Put three batteries. Stick this guy over here. Wow. And it goes much more. So what's lovely about this is you've got the three ideas. You've got potential difference, which is pushing the electrons around. You have got the resistance, which determines how quickly it goes. And then finally, you've got the current, which is the flow of electrons itself. OK? So the three things, three things go together. Well, and you can play with, you can, which is the positive end of the battery. That's our next thing right now. If you look at any battery, let's take one right out of here. And you look at it. Which is the positive end? One which take a look at it there. Alex? Take a look at it there. And at the very back, take a look at it there. Okay. You can see each battery's got a positive end on it. Yes. So this guy here, the one as you said, with the bolt at the top of it, is the positive. Current flows which way? There's a positive and there's a negative. Current flows from the positive to the negative. Or negative to the positive. Let's go back to this guy. See my see the black end here? If I take that battery out. Can you see by looking at it which is the positive end? Yeah. No. I'm guessing the black one. Can you see this end of it here? There's a little notch right there. Right. So that's the positive end. So that's the positive end. So which way is the current going? Positive. Happy days. Right. I've held this right here. 
That's the positive end. That's the negative end of the battery. Current course, you say from positive to negative or negative to positive? Negative to positive. Check the notes that I gave you yesterday. Current conventional. Conventional current. Goes from positive to negative. So conventional current is going to go around like that direction there. But it's not though. But what's not? It's going the other way. What's going the other way? The electron is going the other way. Remember, when these boys put this stuff together, they thought these were positive charges going from a positive to a negative end, so they said that's the direction in which everything is moving. So we keep that convention. It's known as conventional current. It's going from the positive end to the negative end. Whereas in reality, what's actually happening is it's the electrons which are going that direction down there. So the electrons are going from the negative end and being attracted to the positive end. So we just keep an eye on that again. As soon as I do that, we'll probably lose these guys here. So we're saying the electrons should be moving in that direction. The current goes in this direction. So we want to see that are those guys correct. And I don't remember myself which is which. Let's take a quick look at it here. So these represent what? The electrons are going in that direction. And I don't think I can write here at all. Yeah, I don't think I can write there. So the electrons are going this end, even though the current is going to that end. You know when the light bulb blows in the copper bit? Yeah. How much power does it need to go since it's in the system? Yeah, you'll find that basically, if you have a 6 volt bulb, that would be very, very thin. If it's a 40 or a 6 watt, it'll be normally measured in watts. And we'll see later on, we haven't done it yet. Watts is a measure of the volts, yeah, the potential difference, which is measured in volts, multiplied by the current. So, as soon as you ask the question, it will be determined by how thick that guy there is. And the thicker it is, the more current it can take through it. But when it blows, it's that little filament in there that actually blows generally. Okay? And again, in a light bulb, you don't normally see it, but there's got to be two connections. So if you have a normal light bulb, there's got to be a connection going into it, and there's got to be a connection going out to it. And it's not normally obvious which is which. But normally the casing is attached to one side of it, and the bottom is attached to the other side of it. Okay? We get rid of all of that.